Hi there, welcome back and this is uh, another behind the scenes video. Today I'm just getting the, the kayak out and making sure that uh, everything still works, all the electrical connections work and that nothing's corroded up over the winter whilst it's been sat in the garage. This is my kayak, a Perception Triumph 13, 13 foot and uh, I've adapted it for fishing. So I thought I'd just take you through a few of the things that I've done to it. And, uh, and talk you through how I've got it actually set up and, uh, and what features it's got. One of the things I really like about this kayak is, is the, the sharp bows. It really cuts into any slight chop or waves quite nicely and rides quite high in the water. So one of the first things that I added was an anchor trolley system. If you have a look on YouTube, you'll see how these are set up. But effectively, it means that I can have the anchor from the front or the rear of the kayak and on a kayak where you can't get to the front from the seat well not without falling in anyway you definitely need this kind of system works really well it also doubles up as an emergency tow rope if you need to be towed or tow somebody in the front of the kayak under this big cover waterproof cover is plenty of space in here my kayak trolley you can take the wheels off and fold it and the whole lot goes inside here the other thing that I've got in here is the sandwich box, but this one doesn't have sandwiches in. It's got uh, electrical connections and uh, inside here I've got a 12 volt battery together with some spare fuses and that powers the, the sound of the fish finder. There's enough power in there to run the fish finder for about three days. The things that you put in this front hatch are things that you can't get at when you're when you're out on the water. I've added two of the mounts here, flush mounts, which I use for the rod rests. I rather like these because the, the rod handle goes in. They're quite adjustable, so you can either have them pointing quite high up with the rod or at the water, fairly flat. They also have a nice hook over here should you be busy doing something else like paddling suddenly get a fish grab the, the bait your rod doesn't go over the side the other thing that i have is quite a lot of these lashes in the kayak world we call this lash it or lose it so if the boat tips over at least things are attached to it and uh, you can uh, you can get everything back aboard i mentioned about the battery the cables come underneath inside the hull here Come through the waterproof gland to get to the, the head unit. The transducer itself is stuck in the bottom of the boat so it fires through the hull to, uh, to get the depth and everything. I use a, a Garmin Striker 4. It's a nice compact waterproof little unit. I can get all my marks on there for wrecks, rough ground, uh, where I've got fish. It's um, also got GPS on it, so you can, you've got a GPS like that long location. Next to that, I've got a little pocket here in the, in the hole. Just a, a little bag there, which is waterproof. I keep things like GoPro batteries, uh, my phone in an aqua pack, car keys, anything like that. I just put that in there safely out the way. I don't tend to open this up when we're on the move. These model in the seat. One of the nice things about this kayak is it comes with this quite high back seat. Certainly for me, I just prefer to have that back support. After you've been out in the kayak for all day, you really appreciate this and it's pretty adjustable as well with the straps. You okay there, Dee? Keep that seat warm. Got your bandana on today, but we can't see it behind your ears, can we? You might have noticed that I've given the kayak a name. And in this case, it's Ayiskar. Ayiskar is Gaelic, and it's Gaelic for either fisherman or fishing vessel. So um, moving around to the back of the kayak in the, in the well area, I've just put this uh, stacker box in, and that's got all my fishing tackle in. It's secured with the bungee cords. The lids stop, don't open because of the tab. If the kayak went over, hopefully everything would stay in there and I wouldn't lose reels and, and box of tackle, etc. So um, it's all homemade, so um, you'll have to bear with me with that. A little bit worse for wear with a bit of rust coming on it, but we'll sort that out this year. Inside, 
I was lucky, two of these chopping boards just made a lid for it. That was really, really lucky. Things in here are uh, a rag, wipe my hands, the essential first aid kit, take this everywhere. I'll be rechecking this to make sure everything's in date, but basically should have got a small cut on the hand. I'll clean it up, put a plaster on, just saves getting uh, fish goop in, uh, in open cuts and going septic and things. Also have some sunny cream. Believe it or not, yeah, it does get uh, sunny enough in Scotland to have some sun cream. And then I've got it onto the anchor here, which is a 2.5 kilo um, grapnel anchor. We've got a weak link at this end. So if it gets snagged, hopefully we can break the weak link and the chain attached at this end will pull it out in the opposite direction that they went in. So hopefully it doesn't get stuck. That is onto just a length of chain. And then all of that is connected to this reel. Now, I used to do quite a lot of subaqua diving, and this is one of these uh, surface marker boy reels, just been repurposed for kayaking now. And believe it or not, this small line is just all that's needed. It's pretty strong. It's all that's needed to hold this kayak in a couple of knots of current. Any more than that, you wouldn't really want to be anchoring up. There's 50 meters of line on here. It's quite hard winding it up. I wouldn't want to wind more than 50 meters. Onto that, I've got some floating line. Just allows me to then have uh, a marker buoy and the anchor trolley will take this line either to the front of the kayak or the rear um, so you can be anchored uh, end on. Last thing you want is to be anchored side on. You could easily tip the kayak over that way. Now having this floating line system attached to the kayak there, it's just a, attached on the cleat. Now if you need to get away quickly, say you've got to see a big bow wave coming off a boat that's come close, uh, or a boat's going to run you down, or you need to shoot off to go and take photographs for your mate or something, you can just unhook this. The, uh, the boy will keep everything up on the surface, uh, you can paddle back to it and pick up the line again and be fishing back where you were previously. Also in the box here, I have um, a drogue. The drogue just acts like a huge parachute. It just slows your drift down and makes things a little bit slower. Kayaks like this definitely catch the wind. So a drogue is pretty essential. The other thing in here is just a small box, uh, rigs, weights, hooks, all the bits and bobs that I'm going to need for that particular trip. I do try to keep it minimalist, um, otherwise you end up carrying an awful lot of gear around that you don't need, particularly lead weights. On the back of the box, I've also strapped some plastic piping and uh, I use that just like a rod holder, stick the rod handle in there so you can have a couple of rods shooting up the back here and then that's not in the way when you're sat in the seats and paddling etc. You might have noticed an extra paddle really as a just in case you never know you might break the main paddle it might drop over the side anything can happen to it so always nice to have so that you know you've got another paddle just to either get you back to shore or paddle you across to get a floating paddle somewhere else. Some of you regular viewers to the channel will notice that I don't necessarily spend a huge amount of money on gear, but one thing I haven't skimped on is the buoyancy aid. This one is made by Palm. It's a uh, koala angler is the name they give it. It's got a pocket here for your knife. Uh, I do tend to keep a knife attached to me just in case I go overboard and need to cut lines or anything. It's got plenty of pockets for all the stuff that you need. In this pocket, always attached by a line, is the VHF radio. And before I go out, I make sure that that is fully charged and we've always got the radio with us. Now, if I fall overboard, with that being attached to me, the radio's with me, not on the kayak drifting off somewhere. I can always call for help. So that stays in there. The other thing I've got is, um, it's getting pretty old now, but it's a Garmin Dakota 20. This runs off uh, two AA batteries. I've put Garmin C maps on it. So I've got uh, navigational maps on there. Up in the Northeast of Scotland, we quite often get uh, sea fog. It's known as a HAR, H-A-R-R, -R, 
it's a really thick fog that rolls in it's quite scary comes in quite quickly what you want to be able to do is with your maps get yourself back to the little harbour wherever you've actually launched from so very comforting that that's actually attached into the jacket here it gives me another gps lat long system so i know exactly where i am if i had to call emergency services it's a backup really to the gps that i've got on the garmin here so lovely jacket i'll look after that and hopefully it looks after me the final thing though to talk about really is clothing it's important to be warm out on a kayak in the winter time and early and late season i use a full dry suit and the reason for that is if you fall over a board um, and it's easily done you're going to get wet and it's not going to be very pleasant that's the end of your fishing trip really so i use a full a full dry suit in the summer when it's a little bit warmer it's like kayaking shorts and a kayak a kayaker's kayak just uh, makes it a little bit nicer when it's really warm always have the hat on it gets cold and uh, you want to keep the sun off your head as well as it get, keeping the warmth in that is my kayak setup so a lot of people ask about kayaks just thought i'd do a quick run through of what i've got there are better kayaks out there there are different kayaks it's each to their own this is what i've got and it works for me and i love it so hoping to get some good trips out this year just thought I'd take the opportunity for the behind the scenes as to what the kayak is all about. Hope you found it useful. If you've got any questions, do put them in the comments and uh, I do try to respond to everybody's questions. So, tight lines from me and tail wag from D. Catch you again later. Bye now. Okay, fishing dog. What do you think of the kayak? Not much because you ain't allowed out in it, are you? Too many hooks and too much bait.